Welcome to September everyone, and you already know what that means, the Apple event is in just a couple of days. A lot of new leaks have popped up, courtesy of Maguire Woods, not to be confused with Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire, and he has a pretty decent track record when it comes to Apple leaks. But as with all leaks, do take this with a pinch of salt, as the only people who really know exactly what's going to happen at the event are those who work at Apple themselves. Starting off with performance, we know the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max will be coming with the A16 Bionic chip, which is based off the same 5 nanometer process as the A15. And we all know the A15 will be retained on the iPhone 14 and 14 Max, meaning that this upgrade is mostly going to be an incremental one with no significant improvements to performance. But considering the fact that the iPhone 13 series already topped the charts when it comes to performance, I don't think a lot of people are going to be too disappointed with the lack of a significant performance boost this year. One thing I'm looking forward to, and I think a lot of people are expecting as well, is the improved thermal regulation on the Pro models of this year's iPhones. A lot of people have complained about their iPhones overheating during intensive tasks, such as playing graphically demanding games like Genshin Impact. Apple is expected to include a vapor chamber cooling system with the new iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, which is going to improve sustained performance quite significantly. Maguire seems to agree with this theory as he claims to have seen better heat management on the test boards of these iPhones. Now, this could mostly be due to software optimization, but he also mentioned that the 14 Pro and Pro Max could see some changes to their chassis, which would allow for these improvements to take place. With regards to the colors, Maguire believes that the regular models could come in green, purple, blue, black, white, and red. The pink model, which was rumored at some point, seems to have been replaced by the purple variant, while the pro models could come in green, purple, silver, gold, and graphite, which is Apple's way of saying matte black. And the purple model is stated to be the replacement for the Sierra blue color we got with the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max last year. The purple colorway does make a lot of sense, seeing as it has been reported by nearly everyone, but the green colorway is a bit interesting, as Apple typically only launches one new color at the initial release of the iPhones, saving other color options for their mid-year refresh. We usually get graphite, silver, gold, and one new color, but this does not seem to be the case with this year's Pro iPhones. It's very possible that the green comes out as a mid-cycle refresh like we got with the 13 series, but we'll have to wait and see, as it's not likely for Apple to complicate the already strained supply chains by adding one more color option at launch. But if it does turn out to be true, then that would be great, as it's always nice to see more colorful devices, especially with the Pro model iPhones. And if you're still watching at this point, then leave a phone emoji in the comment section right below the like button, and a sub to the channel would be colorful. Still on the colors, Maguire provided the hex code for the purple iPhone, and it turns out to be a lot darker than what we were expecting. I think it still looks good in this shade, and I can see a lot of people opting for this version. Now, onto the display. We already know the iPhone 14 series will be getting 120 hertz, but we want to address some news regarding the rumored always-on display. In concordance with the previous report gotten from Xcode leaks, the always-on display seems to feature a black background with only the widgets, the time, and the date visible on the screen. And seeing as this is Apple's first iteration of an always-on display, there will be no customization of this feature, meaning the widgets of the lock screen will be the same widgets on the always-on display, which makes sense given that Apple wants to transition from the lock screen to the always-on display to be as seamless as possible. There should also be a nightstand mode available, similar to what we have on the Apple Watch, which is great for those who have wireless charging stands. Maguire then proceeds to outline how to turn on the always-on display, which essentially entails going to the settings, heading to the display in brightness, and then selecting always on display, which should be found in its own section under appearance. The always on display seems to be disabled by default, which makes a bit of sense, seeing as a lot of consumers might not actually use it because of the little battery drain that it does contribute to. And considering the fact that we are expecting slightly worse battery life this year, it only makes sense for people to not want to turn it on. Now, regarding the build material for the Pro models, Maguire does not believe that there will be a titanium version coming for the Pro iPhones, contrary to previous reports. He mentioned that there were prototype housings made, however, titanium was deemed too hard to work with and not cost effective as a result. So stainless steel remains the material of choice for the chassis of the Pro model iPhones. Which is a bit of a shame, seeing as titanium would have given us a lighter build, double the strength of stainless steel, and a matte finish to help combat the fingerprint smudges that we always see on the stainless steel sides. It seems like the bad news continues, 
as storage options are expected to remain the same as that of the iPhone 13 series, meaning the base models will come with 128GB of storage, which is quite unfortunate seeing as the Pro models are expected to receive significant camera upgrades meaning even larger sizes for photos and videos. And speaking of cameras, Maguire mentioned that the lenses of the new iPhones would be supplied by a different manufacturer, and this has been confirmed by Quo as well. Apparently, Apple's usual suppliers have been dealing with cracking issues on the rear camera lenses, and they are now relying on a different supplier to provide the new lenses. And thankfully, there seems to be some good news for the display manufacturer BOE, as they will be in charge of producing the displays for the base iPhone 14 models according According to Maguire, and he believes they are ready to go and look just fine as far as he can tell. And now that BOE have finally attained the quality and standard demanded by Apple, the cheaper BOE displays should reflect on the prices of the new iPhone 14 lineup, contributing to lower prices, right? Well, not exactly. Maguire believes that the regular iPhone 14 could maintain a starting price of $799, but the 14 Max could cost $200 more with a starting price of $999, which is something that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, as why would Apple charge an extra $200 for a bigger display and a bigger battery? The Max versions of the Pro iPhones have historically only been $100 more expensive, and they offered exclusive features like the sensor shift stabilization in the 12 Pro Max. So for Apple to charge an extra $200 for the same phone with a bigger display makes absolutely zero sense. And what makes things even more confusing is the fact that still in Maguire's report, he states that the iPhone 14 Pro will come in at $1099, while the iPhone 14 Pro Max will come in at $1199. And when you take a look at this, it makes practically no sense for the difference in price in the Pro models to only be $100, whereas the difference in price for the non-Pro models is $200. I find this highly unlikely. And right now you can actually find a 13 Pro Max for about $1,000 on clearance and it's a clearly better device than the 14 Max. So I don't believe the 14 Max will cost $1,000 as well, but rather $899. But according to Apple Track, another well-known leaker, the prices for the iPhone 14 lineup will be $749 for the iPhone 14, $849 for the 14 Plus or 14 Max, $1049 for the 14 Pro, and $1149 for the 14 Pro Max, which is basically a $50 reduction across the board. And I guess that does make a bit of sense, but we'll have to wait and see. But basically, that sums up the latest leaks from Maguire and Apple Track. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section right below the like button. And if you enjoyed this video, you can check out my previous iPhone 14 video, or you can choose any video from this playlist. But before you go there, subscribe to the channel. Peace.